Uh, just kind of looking back at the weekend, um, you know, what a great weekend for our university, for our football program. Um, you know, I thought our kids played extremely hard and extremely physical. And uh, we've, we've had a lot of conversations in here about efficiency and complimentary football, and, and we finally did that. And I was uh, extremely happy for the guys. You know, um, it means a lot to them. They put a lot of work into it, and just to see it uh, – uh, go them go out there and execute it the way that we we vision it and the way that they see it as well and then go into the locker room and celebrate afterwards is a great overall win versus um, that's that's a great program that's a proven program uh, you know coach Clark's done a really good job at that school and and obviously he played there and he's got a lot of pride and, and passion in in that university and uh, you know he you know listen to his press conference you know he's, he's gonna have them you know ready to respond you know um, uh, after this uh, this loss this past weekend, but but just overall, um, you know, happy for the guys. But you know, it's 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 we're in the fun belt, we're in the sun belt, and uh, you know, it, it was it was short lived. We enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was always a better feeling coming in here on Sundays after a victory. Uh, but but these guys know that we've got a tough task at hand coming up versus Troy, and I think Troy is one of the the better teams in our league right now. They're playing at a very high level. Um, Coach Summerall's got those guys playing sound and efficient. Um, you're going to hear that word a lot too, um, uh, is the efficiency side of it of what they do. But um, you know, you, you look at where they're at. They're four and two. Um, they lost on a hail mary to App, and they they played Ole Miss very very tough. They did, and you know they they could sit there and be five and one. They could be six and zero. Oh, you know, they're they're a team that the, the other teams that they played they handily beat, and. Uh, you know, it's because of the style of play. They're very efficient in what they do. They, they're gonna, they're gonna run the ball and they're gonna formation you and they're gonna motion you and and do a lot of things on offense and and they're gonna get the ball in play and they're gonna ball control and they're gonna huddle and uh, they're gonna use unique tempos to kind of catch you off guard and and defensively, um, you know, just with Coach Summerall's background, uh, I got a ton of respect for him and what he's done. It's 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 very. Uh, it reminds me of the Baylor week where you know. It, you, you sit there and, and you look at tape for hours upon hours and you really don't have much on your call sheet because they're very sound in what they do. You know, you, you watch so much tape on them that you just hope like you can find something that you can expose them. But uh, they're a very well coached team and uh, they play hard and they play physical. And I, uh, the one thing I was laughing at was, you know, you look at their roster and I feel like this team has been there forever. There's a lot of three and four year starters on their teams. This is the same exact team, you know, that we played in 2019. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just kind of crazy how, you know, the COVID year and, and how great of players they were. You just hope they were gone at this point, you know. Like, you know, I, I, I talked to, you know, Carlton Marshall after the, at the end of the game last year and was hoping that I never got to play him again. But it looks like we're playing him again this week. And he's about 50 tackles away between from being the all-time leader in college football history for tackles. So uh, he's a very good player. But... You know, they're great across the board. You know, I think, you know, their quarterbacks, they got two veteran quarterbacks. I think their O-line, they got four starters back. Uh, their receivers are very dynamic. Uh, you know, Tez Johnson's a guy that you guys have heard of many times before. And and uh, I was joking with Bran about this. I'm like, you don't even really have to prepare for this because it's the same exact personnel that we've been facing, you know, and have been having trouble with over the last few years. But, uh, you know, their running backs are back too, you know, Billingsley and uh, Vital. And, those guys are very solid backs and big backs, and you know, and they and they've been rushing the ball very well lately. You know, defensively, it's the same defensive front, it's the same linebackers, it's the same de uh, defensive backs, and uh, we got our we got our hands full this week, and and uh, you know, it's you know, we enjoyed the the App State game, but we know that we got a tough task at hand, especially being 0 and 3 on the road, uh, going into a, their homecoming game, a, a pretty hostile environment. It's a, it's always a fun place to play because uh, their their fan base is pretty rowdy when you get into that stadium, man. Uh, you know, so we've got to have great focus and execution, but it's about the efficiency and playing team football because they're going to make you earn everything. And if they, if they get you behind the chains, and you know they're going to they're going to you know keep everything in front of them and rally and play hard. And you know we, we've got to try to get them out of their game plan. Um, that's the way you have to compete against these guys because they're playing at a high level. But you know it's a Sun Belt every week is is going to be fun. I'll probably say the same thing the week after versus Southern Miss as well. So. Uh, but you know we're looking for this challenge. You know, obviously a, a great win for us on Saturday. But it's time to move forward and, and focus on Troy and and see if we can come out with a victory on the road, which uh, we have yet to do this year. So questions.
Yeah, no, our players should know exactly what to expect, <laughs> you know, because, you know, that we've gone up against them so many times, you know, and they've had our number the, the past few years. And, and um, you know, we got it to a point last year where we were competitive and, and didn't finish the game that we the way we should have in the fourth quarter last year. And, um, you know, that one kind of still stings from last year as well. But, you know, you got to move on, make your corrections. But, uh, you know, these guys, uh, you can go back into your notes on everything that they've done over the past three years in terms of their tendencies and what they do uh, from a personnel standpoint. But, uh, you know, it, it is is good to know. But the thing is, they've been going up against us too, you know, so they're, they're pretty familiar with us. So, um, you know, it'll be, probably, it'll be pretty interesting when you go in and play them next year because uh, it'll be completely different teams, you know, so. Uh, but it is advantageous, like you're saying. It was it was more execution, you know. That there, there was some things that some new wrinkles we had to throw at him just based off of, uh, you know, injuries. You know, like, you know, throughout the course of the week, we didn't have very many guys play. We didn't know who was going to be ready to play or not. Um, you know, there's even doubts with Ashton playing in the game. You know, um, just with uh, kind of the injuries, but we had a pretty good mix with those inside receivers on just kind of limited amounts of reps. But that allowed us to get some more tight end packages in the game uh, in spread sets. So that, that was kind of the tweak that, that occurred throughout the course of the game. But it was more about just execution. We were throwing, we were catching, we were, we were making contested plays. And we were, we, were, we were blocking pretty well up front, you know. And that, you know, nothing like none of the plays were different. You know, it's just you know, we, we were executing them at a higher level. And uh, it was good watching the tape with them because they at least know what, you know, the capability of, of you know, their potential, you know. And, and uh, you know, they they got they got some confidence from that game, you know, and hopefully that kind of rubs off on it moving forward. Last week, Coach, you mentioned that um, all the mistakes you made at JMU were catastrophic. Every time you made a mistake, it turned into points for James Madison or your team just had a hard time in overcoming those mistakes. You go back to the App State game, great opening drive, but it ends with a turnover in the end zone. So there's one of those mistakes that you have to try to overcome. You're able to do that. So do you feel as if the message was uh, received by your team to get past those mistakes? Yeah, no, I thought that was kind of the momentum swing of the game. You know, I thought we, we were efficient. We moved all the ball all the way down and then had that interception in the end zone, which uh, could be pretty devastating, you know. Um, but our defense came out, and they had that turnover on downs right there around midfield, which uh, we capitalized off of that. So they elevated their play, and then we took advantage of the turnover on downs, and that's the complementary side of football that we – that we need to do more frequently, and you know that uh, you know I, I did say in the press conference like last year, and I what I mean uh, last week, and and then what I told the team all week as well is that you know if you keep working hard and you keep doing the right thing and you stick together and, and are constructive about what you do, the ball is eventually going to bounce your way. And and we've had some like I said even last week we've had some unfortunate losses in our uh, in my career here so far and. And uh, at the end of the day, we we just kept our focus, and the ball bounced our way at times. You know, they got hit with some unfortunate, you know, things on their end, and we took advantage of it. And that's uh, that's the quality of a, a good team. You know, we're not to that point yet, but you know, App State does that all the time. Like if we would have done that to App State, that would have got out of control. You did that to James Madison, and it got out of control because those are good teams. Uh, but we we didn't, you know, let our guard down. You know, and we ended up. Uh, you know, capitalizing on their mistakes, and and uh, that's something that we've been preaching, and we finally did it. Tory Spears is in his third year with you in, in, in his program. He'd yet to have really that kind of marquee moment. Um, you thought it was going to come in the first half, but he dropped a would-be pick, and then you go to the first drive of the second half. App State's got a chance to make it a two-possession game, 24 to 10, and you know, right back in it. And then he makes amends for the drop pick. He gets, gets the pick six for his first signature moment, you know, really with this program, winds up being named Sunbelt Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Now that he's in his third year with you, uh, how special was it for you as his coach to see him get that signature moment? Yeah, no, it, Tory has been here for a few years now and been through a lot of ups and downs and unfortunate injuries. And, you know, he, he actually was injured early in, earlier in this, this year. I think he was out two games. I think he was out Houston Christian and, and Baylor. Um, you know, and just for him to come back and still play at a, at a high level, and uh, he's fearless out there. You know, and and he brings a, a physicality. Uh, you know, he. I think the best players are the ones that embrace that they're gonna, 
there's going to be a lot of pain in this game and they just go ahead and go full speed into it understanding that you know face the facts that you're going to hurt and so you can just focus on trying to be as aggressive as and physical as you possibly can and that's Tory. Um, he had 12 tackles he was flying all over the place you know and and the conference defensive player of the week was you know deservingly uh, rightfully so for him and, and uh, he got that pick six um, you know, I was surprised he made it. You know, like yeah, I'm saying, when he cut back at the 50, I thought uh, it was pretty awesome to watch that happen because, you know, we talk about being focused, and you know, he missed that pick, but it, you know, don't worry about it. Like you know, just move on. Don't let it affect the previous play, and uh, and keep the focus and the intensity, and and you know, those three to five plays that change a game. If you have that that focus, not dwelling on the past, when that opportunity comes, you never know when that opportunity will come. So elevate your play and make that play when it does come, and he did. He did that, and it was awesome to see. And then uh, he was tired and had to go right back out there on uh, on defense right after that. And uh, that was another long drive, but that really kind of sealed the game and changed the entire vibe of the of really the the management of the game. You know, because I said after the game, uh, you know, when you get go up thirty to three, and then they have another long drive, you don't get the the ball back till you know it's thirty to ten, and when you got the ball back, I think it was around seven six and a half seven minutes left, which at that point, it was more about, all right, let's try to ball control a little bit and try to see if we can burn their timeouts. And we got their timeouts done. And at that point, uh, it was about efficiency and, and moving the ball. And uh, I thought we did a pretty good job at, at sustaining that throughout the course of the second half. And it all stemmed from Tory's interception. So your team keeps showing the ability to bounce back from losses. Every time you've, you've suffered defeat, you come back and you've, and you've rebounded with a win. So how do you rebound now from a win and keep the momentum going and play consistently game to game? Yeah, it's just a, consistently is the word right there. You know, consistency for us. You know, it's uh, that that's kind of been what we've been preaching about. You know, we've been a, we've been an inconsistent in a lot of different you know facets of the program, and and uh, you know that's something that we're challenging this week. And and like I'm telling you, like last week I talked about the leadership group and and the constructive talks that they had. It was it wasn't co- coach driven. It was player driven, and I, I sense that right now. You know they understand that we still we're at the halfway point of the season. We still got a lot of ball left, and and you know some belts wide open, and you know we got a lot of goals ahead of us, and you know we know that we can't slip by any means, and we've got to you know find a way to go get a road victory. And that's something that we've struggled with, and and um, you know they're looking forward to try to change that. You know, and then they're having talks and discussions, and you know uh, I I feel like that's going to increase as the week goes on, but you know it's. Uh, it, it, we got to be more consistent in what we do. I, I talk about making it a habit, you know. Like that was uh, consistency was the the word on the PowerPoint slide today in front of the team about we got to make this a habit and we got to be consistent in what we do. And it's not just on the field; it's on, it's off the field as well. And how we approach everything, every facet of the game, from your from treatment to recovery to you know understanding the game plan and then also practicing with the edge and the energy and the emotion that you need to practice. And I thought we did that last week. Can we do it again this week? And uh, they had a good practice today, and um, you know, let's see if we consistently do it throughout the course of the week and go out there and try to find try try to find a way to get a win on on the road in a tough environment versus a really good team. Coach, uh, penalties have been something that's kind of you know been a dark moment, I guess, in several of the games. It's really hurt momentum and drives, etc. Against App State, though, is much better, much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a few here that really did hurt. Uh, pretty close on a couple could have been unsportsmanlike conduct, like after the play, real close. Yeah. How do you tell the kids? It's a, football's an emotional game, and look, everyone gets it, but you got to be able to control that. <laughs> so, what's the message to the players so that that doesn't come not back to bite you in another close game like Saturday? It's going to be it's going to be that way against Troy. Yeah. No. It, it's it's kind of exactly what you said is what we addressed the team on um, on Sunday. It's just about you know having controlled emotion. You know, like. You know, we spend all week talking about edge and, you know, toughness and not backing down and fighting and, you know, and like you're preaching that, you know, and, and you have to have that and you know that, like you have to have that, that fight to be successful in, in this game. And, but like, you know, you can always take it a little bit too far, you know, and, and we, we talk about how we have to have controlled emotions. You can't retaliate. You got to be the better man at this. And you also have to lean on your players to get you out of those situations. So we put it on everybody, you know, because We've all been there. We know the emotions flare up, and and um, sometimes you do things that you know you 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 know you never do before. You know, like you never think you would do either. But like again, like you're in a combative state. You know, at all times. You know that sometimes you 
you do uh, kind of break down and have those moments, but it, it's up to everybody to pull you out of those situations and and uh, and get you to calm down and and then also address it, you know, individually about controlling your emotion and and uh, you know I appreciate the edge, but like you know, like again, that can be very detrimental to a drive or you know to the game in general. So um, you know, I thought it was a chippy game, you know, and and we were close on a couple of, uh, with a couple of our players, you know, and. And you know, so were they, you know, and then that's how it, that's how it kind of went by. But uh, that's something that is being addressed because we can't afford those, especially in a team like Troy. You know, a little bit more on Troy. We we talked some more about their defense, but what about their offense? What are you anticipating from them? And quarterback, it's kind of in flux with Watson and Daigie. But what are you anticipating from the Trojans' offense? Yeah, you know, I. <laughs> You know, when he talked to Zach, and he'll talk to him here in a little bit, you know, and and then you kind of study it as you, you know, throughout the course of the week. Uh, you know, they're very multiple. You're gonna you're gonna probably get something that uh, they have not put on tape yet. You know, so you, you have to really be focused on your rules and your assignments and what is being taught. You know, and and uh, they'll do a lot of different things. They'll condense sets. They'll be in 12 personnel and they'll be in empty sets. And you know, like they're gonna they're gonna show you everything. You know, um, they got the two veteran quarterbacks that just know how to manage it, and they know where the ball's supposed to go. They've both thrown for a ton of yards, and you know, Daigie started last week, and and uh, Watson has been, you know, started off the year. And he said that he was going to announce the starter probably later in the week. But you know, we're going to prepare for both of them. You know, they they both know what they're doing, and they're both very talented quarterbacks. And and uh, you know, like I, I think they're going to try to catch you off guard and and do some unique tempo type stuff where you know, like with their huddles and and tempo to the line and. And they're going to hard count you, and they're going to, you know, motion, and they're they're going to do a lot of different things to try to cause confusion. So we have to be locked in mentally, you know, because of all the moving parts that are going to be thrown at you, and a lot of things that you know we have not seen yet. We're expecting that as well. So it'll be a tough challenge for the D. We saw some guys dress out but not play last week, like Calvin Hill, Russell Baker. Any chance those two guys play this week? Yeah, they practice today. You know, it's still a day by day basis. Um, you know, I thought Calvin would have given, given us something last week. Uh, we we had a lot of guys kind of on that borderline. You know, uh, are they going to play or not? Um, you know, that's why you saw Titus Lyons and and Austin Greshel and you know Jamar Daniels was playing a ton of snaps. You know, which if you ever, ever would have told me that you know Jamar would have been a, a fullback for us and really be impactful in the game, I thought he'd been crazy because you know he's just been a D lineman his whole life. But Jamar's played a lot of games. You know, and he does not. He does not have any nerves or anything when he goes out there. So it, it's fun seeing him in a different role out there as well. But, you know, Calvin and Russell, they, they should hopefully be back this week. You know, but, you know, it, it's kind of borderline with a lot of these guys right now. So it, it's kind of a vague answer, but it's just really where we're at. I wanted Calvin to go last week, and he wanted to too. So we'll see if he's going to be ready to go again this week. You mentioned Daniels. First time we saw him, it was on fourth down, fourth and short. This time he was actually getting in there, not on fourth down. I think it was some goal line, other situation. Is he starting to build up your trust in him in that uh, fullback position? Yeah, you, you know, it's um, you know, when you have guys like you know, you have Tyler Huff who's beat up right now, and like I love it. Tyler gives everything he, like he's got, and uh, but you know, it's a taxing position. You know, he's he's literally having to to run and block and throw his body into other guys. You know, on a, a play by play basis. And uh, when you lose Micah like that, and and Jackson is still coming off of a an, an injury as well, but Jackson was back, so we're like he's easing back into it as well. You know, you don't want to just scrap a whole game plan based off of you know if you lose one player or two players. You know, so uh, we kind of went to the drawing board. Coach Felt Boonfeld did an awesome job. He's he's been great with this whole deal and. Uh, he's got those guys to play a lot of different types of positions. You know, it's, it makes it harder on me on game day uh, because we have like 75 personnel groupings now. You know, and you got 11 big in the game, which is uh, for for uh, Bill. You know, or uh, for Jamar. So, um, you know, you, you just got to move and shake with the, that position as much as you can. And and uh, I've got a lot of confidence in him. You know, like there there was kind of a you know wait and see and see how he handles it and, and he was out there playing and having fun and he was emotionally into it and you know you're going to keep seeing his package grow based off of that you saw it didn't see much of Evan Lavelle I don't think he played at all last week either he's still kind of coming along slowly he is Evan's coming along slowly you know we wish he was back he's in, he's always in pain you know he's a tough kid though I'm telling you he uh he wanted to play um I just thought you know coach Hamilton and 
you know, discuss it with me later. Just there, the O line was in a pretty good spot, and that he just kept rolling with that same O line unit. You know, uh, Silas. You know, I can't talk enough about Silas Robinson. You know, uh, you know, he's just always in, in the mix. You know, he's always ready for his opportunity, and he got called again to go this week and start, and he played. You know, he played extremely well, and. And uh, that's kind of what you've seen up front. We've talked about depth, you know, early in fall camp on the way here. We've had a lot of different moving parts up front, but it's a little bit different vibe, uh, you know, compared to what it was last year. We had a lot of different moving parts with O line last year, and uh, we struggled in a lot of areas. And but you know, now we've got more depth because we recruited to a high level, and we've got some guys that are banged up, but we can still efficiently go this, uh, the direction that we want to. So, but hopefully, we can get Evan back in the mix. Anybody I missed injury wise that's uh, on the. No, we had we had a lot, but uh, that that's about it. The ones that we talk, kind of talked about last week, and uh, and they're still kind of on the day, the play by play, you know, game by day by day basis. Uh, you know, hopefully you get you know Ashton kind of gave us a scare later in the week, and I didn't think he was going to go in the game, but I think he's just messing with us sometimes because he goes out there and has 105 yards and a touchdown. So you know, these kids, man.